Hello everybody, my name is Thomas from eustartups.com and um, today I'm here uh, at the ITNIC office and um, invited two uh, lovely guests um, from uh, the Barcelona uh, startup media landscape. Um, we have uh, here um, Sophie from uh, Barcino and um, Vivian from Barcelona Startup News with us. And today we're going to talk about um, how startups uh, should or could um, approach startup PR um, if they want to get more visibility. Um, we will talk about uh, the startup media landscape and a little bit in the end about how we see uh, the Barcelona startup landscape evolving. Um, so let's maybe uh, jump right off um, with a short introduction about uh, uh, each publication. Um, so um, Sophie, do you want to start and give us a brief in uh, yeah, introduction? of course. Um, thank you for having me. Um, I'm Sophie, I'm a content editor at uh, Barcino and also Verbum Creative. Uh, Barcino is a, a collaborative English language publication and we share the updates, news, uh, events, jobs, journal goings on in Barcelona's uh, startup ecosystem. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we have a newsletter that goes out uh, every Monday morning uh, that we hope gives people all the equipment to be up to date for the week ahead of all the goings on in our community, which is obviously growing really rapidly and there's a lot to stay on top of. Uh, and obviously we all want to uh, keep in touch with um, not just how competitors are, are faring in the landscape, um, but also just in general to keep in touch with um, Barcelona as an ecosystem as it grows. And uh, yeah, we hope that Barcino uh, delivers that. Mm -hmm. okay. Now the competitor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, a, that's something interesting. Maybe we could talk about that later, mm -hmm. <laughs> how, how um, we are competing in, uh, in this sector. Um, or are we competing in this sector? <laughs> <It's> <laughs> <my competition. laughs> um, yeah, so hi Sophie, hi Thomas, thank you for, for having me here. Um, so Barcelona Startup News is a, a content project by Nedalia. Uh, it's a platform where um, we share stories of Barcelona startups and, and tech companies. Um, our core business, Nedalia, is a tech recruitment agency, so um, it is in our, in our interest to provide quality content uh, about Barcelona because we're trying to attract tech talent to the city. Um, so even, even though Nedalia works with uh, companies in, in other European tech hubs as well, we're based in Barcelona, so um, you know, it is uh, it is in our interest uh, to be showcasing it for for the startup hub that it is. Mm -hmm. um, okay, and w what do you think? Um, how uh, or yeah, maybe I, I also give a short introduction. So, um, new startups um, is basically what um, what these publications are doing, but um, with um, no focus on a specific city or country. But uh, we focus on everything that happens uh, startup related uh, across Europe. And um, yeah, let's maybe um, jump right to the next uh, question. So what are the common mistakes you see startups doing when approaching you? And uh, what are the, some tips and tricks um, you, would, uh, you could share with um, the viewers on how to increase chances of being um, published on your, um, on your publications? Okay, so I, I think that the number one mistake is um, when startups send us messages that aren't even personalized, so <laughs> it, which can be, it can be like a press release or some sort of an attachment, um, you know, like a piece of news about a funding round or a prize that they've won or something like that or a new product feature and without actually introducing themselves properly. Mm -hmm. So that's something that I can't really, I don't really have an answer to that because I can come across those types of like pieces of news anywhere on the internet. Like it doesn't have to be in my inbox. Mm -hmm. So if it's in my inbox, I would, I would prefer it to be something more personal, like, mm -hmm. um, you know, like why they think that our platform is the, is the right place for them to appear, what they mm -hmm. think is interesting about their project. Uh, what's unique about their story, um, something like that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think that's that's the number one mistake. Yeah, yeah I would agree with that. Um, I think what you say about uh, generic messaging is something that's really helpful. And in general, I guess um, for Barcino, we're interested in um, insights into the Barcelona startup landscape. 
And so um, we don't want to directly promote uh, startups just in that sense. So if people are approaching Barcino in order to do an article or, or a feature or a shout out, I suppose we're interested in, in insights. You know, we, pu we publish articles written by startups that actually tell us something new about potentially why they came to the city, why they chose this place over others. Um, one of our clients writes for our blog sometimes and we were really interested in the reasons why they moved from Miami to Barcelona. Now that's something that's really valuable to our readers. Uh, constant promotion itself of the product is interesting and these products are amazing and a lot of startups creating things that genuinely really solve issues for people day in, day out. But I suppose when you're contacting a platform uh, like Barcino, or I'm sure it's the same for you guys, um, making sure that, that you're actually giving a really interesting insight as well, rather than just self-promotion, I suppose, is mm -hmm. what I would add and agree with you. Yeah, yeah. definitely. What yeah. is your take on that? Yeah, I think it's about personalization, as you said, and making sure that, uh, or showing that you, you kind of understood the publication. Um, mm. So. Um, and I still get many press releases per day actually that start with dear editor, <laughs> um, so they don't even pay attention or don't don't even make the homework and try to find out who's the editor actually what's the name of the editor, and um, and I think also um, <coughs> what's important is um, to um, yeah to to bring something new and. Especially if you're not a uh, if you're a technical startup, uh, to also make sure to tell a story, right? Because highly technical startups often make the mistake they focus on features on or on um, uh, things that uh, are technically um, very uh, very good at their startup, but they don't really um, tell what the problem is they're solving or um, or they they don't describe the pain point customers are having. So I think. Startups often forget about um, telling the story, you know, telling a good story. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and um, also I think what what helps, of course, is always if you um, have um, have uh, um, interest, uh, if you have good names uh, in in, um, um, in in your um, press release. Let's say, like if if you're starting a company with uh, with founders who already succeeded um, in their past or um, if you were able to um, uh, convince a very popular uh, venture capital firm uh, to invest in you. Um, I think all of these are signals um, that it's worth paying attention to your startup. And last but not least, um, it also of course uh, helps increase chances of getting coverage if um, you already have an established content uh, contact to the um, a publication or to the editor, right? Because if I re receive an email from someone I already uh, had a beer with, for example, I will mm -hmm. much will be willing to be will would be willing much more uh, to look into uh, what what the news actually is and then consider writing about them. Um, okay, so let's say um, someone manages to um, be featured in uh, Barcino or Barcelona Startup News, uh, what would you say are the benefits uh, for startups uh, of being present in a publication like, like this? Um, I suppose uh, for us we have quite a large readership. Um, I think it's great that um, by having startups that potentially work in Spanish being featured on an English language platform um, can be really valuable in terms of positioning local businesses in a more international way so that people come into the city, for instance, from a World Congress who maybe might not speak Spanish, might not speak Catalan and are interested about learning about what's going on in the city as they come new to it or as they come to it just for a visit, for a conference, etc. Um, having the word out about your startup uh, in English can be really helpful, I mm -hmm. think. Yes, I, I agree with that. And, um, well, um, obviously we don't have the readership that Barcino has because we've only been around for about a year. Mm -hmm. um, but I've, I think another benefit on, on Barcelona Startup News, for example, would be that um, uh, me as a journalist, I, I really take the time to try to get to know a startup. And um, the format that I prefer is, is, uh, is the interview. So. Mm -hmm. 
uh, you know, visiting startups at their offices and, mm-hmm. and, and spending a few hours there and, and just like looking around, spending some time with them and doing an interview with mm-hmm. the founder or, or CEO. Um, and I think that a smaller platform like ours um, could be beneficial for startups because I can do really in-depth pieces uh, mm-hmm. on them. So, um, you know, um, when it gets around on, on social media, it can be a really good insight into what they do. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it might just find uh, the right person, you know, that, that investor or that mm-hmm. client or whoever they're looking for. True. Yeah. Yeah, that's also what I wanted to add. Like sometimes um, being present at a start at a publication like Barcelona, um, uh, Barcelona Startup News or EU Startups gets you the attention uh, of potential investors, um, also potential team members, um, and in the end, it's also uh, kind of uh, validating um, um, your your startup and shows that um, also a publication thinks uh, your company or your idea is. Uh, valid or promising enough to uh, talk about them. Mm-hmm. Um, so, um, true. Um, and then, um, <coughs> I think another interesting topic to, to, topic to talk about is uh, the monetization um, model of uh, online um, publications like ours, because um, I think um, it's not so easy um, to uh, actually uh, run um, online publications as a business. Um, as as I um, uh, think, you, you both kind of have uh, like side um, businesses, like in, um, to um, so your your online publication is not the main um, the main revenue model. If that's correct, right? Yes. So um, so where do your publications get revenue, and um, how much of this uh, online media revenue or uh, revenues are actually covering? Uh, uh, the, the, the whole costs of, of your organizations? For me, that's, that's, that's a fairly large, large question, a um, budget breakdown of, of the business. Um, I mean, as a content editor, um, I can tell you that we, we definitely uh, receive, we do uh, sponsored posts, um, that makes revenue, um, and we have relationships with clients through um, our content marketing agency, Bourbon Creative, um, the two sit side by side and, and our team work for both mm-hmm. uh, and our business kind of both tend to feed the other in a way. Um, in terms of an exact budget percentage breakdown, uh, I couldn't give you that. Um, it is difficult obviously um, because essentially, as you say, we're journalists um, and it's, that's a sphere where it's very difficult to um, generate a really tangible revenue which is why it's so interesting that so often um, these journalistic publications and websites are connected to businesses in that way. Um, but for us, we find that the two feed each other really well. You brought up the really good point that uh, there are a lot of businesses that don't know how to tell a story. Um, being involved with Barcino means that we understand uh, the kind of stories being told by startups at the moment. And as a content marketing agency, that's what we do. You know, we, we produce content for high-tech startups and companies that need to communicate their really specific, often very high-tech offering to a, uh, an audience in English in a way that tells a story that's emotional, that people can get on board with. So actually we find that those two complement each other really well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so um, like I said, Barcelona Startup News has only been live for about a year. So for us, the first Six months were definitely just about building the platform and like creating that initial bulk of content um, that we have on there. Um, and then since then, we've been trying to integrate it more and more with our core business, which basically just means that since we're, um, I mean, um, the company is a recruitment agency, um, we're trying to attract um, candidates to Barcelona to relocate here, to start working here at startups or tech companies. So basically, Barcelona Startup News is a platform for them to um, sort of find our recruitment agency and, and to get in touch with us. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, as our organic search results have been growing, um, we've been finding that a lot of people have, have been coming to us through Barcelona Startup News, mm-hmm. uh, reaching out to us with requests like, um, I'd love to move to Barcelona, like what opportunities mm-hmm. do you think I would have there? I have this and that um, profile. Um, 
So yeah, it's just we're we're trying to build this community and and also trying to build a sense of trust with these people. Uh, it's so it's mostly uh, people that don't currently live in Barcelona, but but would like to live here mm -hmm. or are considering living here. Um, yeah, with your startups, it's pretty much the same. So um, we also uh, have not just like this online media advertising model where. Um, old school um, media companies used to monetize their reach and um, we have revenue streams like uh, the EU Startup Summit, um, so um, uh, ticketing sales and sponsorships there, then we have um, premium content, for example we sell an annual um, uh, report about uh, startup accelerators which gives an, gives an overview about accelerator programs in Europe and then we also like Brasino have a, a little um, job board um, and um, we also have um, a uh, kind of consulting service um, for corporates and investors called Startup Sourcing, um, where we help them find startups um, from very specific uh, industries, uh, business stages and locations. And it's kind of a scouting service where we help um, them get in contact with these um, promising startups. So um, I agree it's not... Um, not a money-making business, right? Um, but uh, I'm sure we all agree that it's a very uh, cool um, uh, niche to be in, and I think we we all um, uh, have the opportunity to speak with many passionate uh, founders, and um, and so I think it's um, much more interesting maybe to uh, compare to running a publication about the uh, insurance industry or something. Mm -hmm. Or <laughs> so I think the startup space is pretty pretty exciting still and um, speaking about the startup ecosystem and um, and uh, the development um, um, maybe you could give us um, a little um, uh, uh, impression uh, about how you see um, the comparison between the London ecosystem and the Barcelona startup ecosystem because when I understand it correctly you basically uh, came here from London by the end of last year or when yeah, did you yeah, arrive? And that. Yeah, so uh, I arrived midway through last year. I'm from London, born and bred, mm -hmm. and uh, I worked for a startup in London um, before coming here. Um, I think it's really interesting the way that there's a lot of talk at the moment about um, about Barcelona become so up and coming. Obviously, there's a lot of talk about Barcelona at the moment. There's a lot of buzz. There's a lot of energy. You spoke about the community, and it really is a growing community. And every year we see the ecosystem here become more diverse, become bigger. It becomes a place that startups don't just come to launch, which was how it was spoken about a few years ago, but also to launch and grow. Since we've seen a lot more investors coming to the city, we've seen eight business angels and uh, accelerated programs and it becomes a place not only to kickstart your business but also to, to grow it and we see companies growing and, and staying in Barcelona like bigger companies like Typeform which might not have been around a few years ago or it was mostly just a startup mm -hmm. hub so I think that's uh, what's really exciting about Barcelona and obviously um, we all came here from our, uh, other countries and Barcelona has a very unique offering. I think the comparison between London is a really interesting one because Barcelona is, is significantly smaller, you know. Um, London uh, has a lot of tech giants there and we're dealing with things on a much larger scale. Um, I guess th that has really interesting consequences in the fact that when you have tech giants in a city like London, uh, salaries are higher, the cost of living is bumped up. I mean, the cost of living is, is increasing here, as we know, but mm -hmm. the cost of living becomes much higher. Um, developer salaries are significantly higher. There's much more of a pressure on tech talent in London that doesn't exist here. So I think there's this sense that um, Barcelona is, is growing massively and there's so much energy and there's so much going on and that's why we love it. Uh, I think there's also something to be acknowledge in the fact that it remains a smaller ecosystem. Um, it's not the next Silicon Valley, it's a, a kind of much more community feeling version of that, I think, mm -hmm. which is why lots of the benefits of Barcelona exist, such as the fact that it is cheaper to set up a business here. Um, so yeah, I think Barcelona is heading in the direction that London is, but I think it has something really special that London has potentially lost as it's grown so much. Yeah. Um, 
So yeah. And maybe after Brexit, more and more London-based startups will consider to relocate. That is a huge factor. <laughs> yeah, and part of the reason why Barcelona has become such uh, such a hub, such an attraction for startups and, and tech businesses, is the fact that there is so much uncertainty in places like London. Yeah, nobody knows what's going to happen with Brexit. It's uh, no coincidence that I left the city very shortly after it, after it happened. When there's uncertainty in a country. Um, people obviously look elsewhere to launch their businesses. Um, there's a lot of uncertainty in the US at the moment. Um, we see a lot of businesses choosing to come to Europe rather than baiting them in the US. Um, so I think there's also this sense that um, there's, a, there's a lot of uncertainty in traditional tech hubs. Mm -hmm. And that's why we have the rise of more alternative ecosystems like Barcelona, which potentially have something different, something new, something fresher to offer mm -hmm. that doesn't come with that added sense of insecurity that is existing at the moment in places like London. Yeah. Okay, a very positive outlook. <laughs> yeah. So at your startups, we also um, publish an annual um, research about the leading startup hubs in Europe. Mm -hmm. And uh, we look at factors on, of how many startups are located here, um, how many uh, investors, and um, actually Barcelona is um, ranked uh, the last two years um, on rank number five mm. and um, this is not just in our ranking the case but also other um, publications and, um, um, and organizations made similar um, rankings and Barcelona always is in like between rank four and, and seven in Europe I would say mm. and so I really think um, Barcelona is an exciting um, startup hub um, but um, to be honest, I wouldn't um, see it so optimistic as you, um, um, especially like um, uh, after seeing like this political um, um, instabilities in the recent past. Um, I think this brought um, uh, a lot of uncertainties um, to Barcelona, and maybe you, like in this HR uh, space, also made some experiences there um, because I think. Um, it sometimes makes it hard for companies to plan for the for the future. Mm -hmm. And did you see any um, impact of that already in in the tech and startup ecosystem in Barcelona, or do you think it it didn't have any um, negative uh, impact so far? I mean, as a business, what what we saw uh, was from the candidates' side that some some people were definitely uh, more reluctant to consider accepting a position in Barcelona because. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, based on what you see in the in the media, you you definitely start having concerns. Um, as for the Barcelona tech and startup scene, um, I don't think it had any direct ef effect on smaller startups. Mm -hmm. um, probably bigger companies that that we heard had moved um, their their financial headquarters out of the um, out of the region. Um, they were more affected by it. Um, None of the people that I've talked to had experienced any any personal, um, um, you know, drawbacks because of this. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you had any uh, concrete experience. I can't think of a specific example mm -hmm. of of a of a smaller sized company, but I mean there may well have been one. Of course, it was a it was a very difficult um, year for Catalonia, of course. Mm -hmm. um, Okay. Yeah, so in, in, in general, um, it is said to have had a, an yeah. effect on the economy of the region. Yeah. That's definitely mm -hmm. undeniable. Yeah. Um, but I mean, um, we have to say that 2017 was still uh, the best year so far for the Barcelona startup ecosystem. Mm -hmm. So yeah. even though this, um, this happened in October, um, it's not like there was a decline uh, mm -hmm. in, in, in any way. Um, Mm -hmm. So um, I'm optimistic too, <laughs> but I mean, of course, we're biased. Yeah, okay. <laughs> we're extremely biased. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, cool. Uh, what is the best way to reach out to uh, Barcelona and Barcelona startup news? Um, um, like reaching out via email or contacting you uh, on social media channels? How should a startup approach you guys? Yeah, by by email. Um, by what what's social the email? media? Uh, in barcino.com oh, okay. mm -hmm. um, I suppose also you mentioned it's interesting that you said you're more inclined to uh, feature somebody who you've had a beer with mm -hmm. um, we're pretty active here in terms of attending events and with such a kind of uh, relatively small startup ecosystem 
Um, if startups are attending a lot of events, conferences, um, we're sure to come across them mm -hmm. <laughs> not too long because we're usually there too. Um, so I suppose, yeah, get in contact by all the usual means. Uh, it, uh, and uh, also just to get about, yeah, getting in touch with the, uh, the community and being present at events and mm -hmm. um, getting your face out there, you know, telling people about your, about your startup. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, social media is good and um, we have a contact page on barcelonastartupnews.com that if you leave a message there it goes directly to my inbox mm -hmm. so um, I guess that's the that's the surest and best way to contact us mm -hmm. um, yeah and uh, we're always looking for exciting projects so um, and especially motivated and inspirational and, and genuine people. Like I think that's the number one priority. So it's mm -hmm. not even the product or, or the company, at least for me. It's, it's um, yeah, it's a personal story, yeah. mm -hmm. and, uh, and 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 just someone who can tell it in a way that that, that is interesting. Mm -hmm. And how many startups uh, reach out to you, like on a on a weekly basis, maybe? Do you have some some numbers there to share? I never thought of it that way. Um, no, I mean a lot. <laughs> yeah, a lot. Okay. Um, yeah, for EU startups, you can reach out to Thomas at eustartups.com, and we get about fifty press releases per day. Um, so, um, and we only publish two articles or three articles per day. Um, currently, since we're organizing the EU Startup Summit, more like one or two articles. Um, so um, it also really helps if you have a personal connection or something really exciting to talk about. I think in general, um, when, it, when we come back to the topic of um, increasing chances of having press coverage, I think what always is um, probably the, the most important is not so much in the end like uh, how the uh, email pitch to the editor is written or how the press release is in the end, but it really comes down to how new and innovative also your product is, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So I think if you invent a time machine, mm -hmm. um, people will write about you in any case, right? Yeah. But if you have just another Me Too product, you really have to uh, invest a lot about how you phrase your uh, story and how you approach people and um, um, who you're approaching. and. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're interested um, in the community in general. That's, the, you know, that's what you said is the thing that's really exciting about being part of publications like this. So um, anyone that's bringing something really exciting to the community, like you say, it's not necessarily about reaching out and having a press release and selling yourself. You know, mm -hmm. if you're being active and if you've got a really exciting product and you're doing well, then you're bound to be discovered by media such as us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And speaking about reaching out, community events, do you have like a favorite um, startup tech event in Barcelona? Uh, and what were, was your impressions about four years from now last week? Um, yeah, so I think by now I can say that I'm a, I'm a regular at Startup Grind. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's one of the best um, platforms right now in, in Barcelona. Um, and well, about four years from now, I, I really enjoyed this year's conference. I was there last year as well. And um, I think that in, in some ways, uh, the fifth edition, so this year's edition was, was better than last year's, but in other ways, uh, it wasn't as good. So um, the first thing that I found really difficult was to pick the, the talk that I, I, I actually was interested in and wanted to listen to because mm -hmm. there were so many going on at the same time. Yeah. And some of them were a little dull, others were a lot more exciting. So, uh, you know, if, if you're an indecisive person, then that's <laughs> definitely going to be very hard for you to, mm -hmm. <laughs> to find what you're interested in. Um, so I think maybe having less stages and less talks but more quality yes. um, speakers perfect. would be would mm -hmm. be perfect. Mm -hmm. Um, on the other hand, I, I really liked the exhibition area where the startups had their, their stands. I think um, the companies showcased there were amazing. It was just uh, endless. It was, it was such a, a great pool of, um, of startups from all over the world. So not mm -hmm. just Barcelona, not just Spain, uh, but from a lot of uh, other countries as well. Um, so, and, and the networking uh, activities were also just masterfully crafted and, mm -hmm. and, and um, and really well done. So congratulations to 4YFN on, on that and uh, looking forward to next year's conference. Mm -hmm.
Yeah, I would, uh, I would agree with you on, on all of that. I found it really inspiring to see uh, the talent on display, yeah, both from uh, Barcelona, from Spain, and from around the world. Um, it seemed uh, very international this year. Um, I think there were more international companies than, uh, than years before. Um, yeah, it was bigger and bigger and better than, than the year before, I suppose. Um, yeah, I think I agree with you that there were so many talks on offer and uh, that it was difficult to, to pick which one to go to. There was, so, there was so much going on. It's interesting that four years from now is meant to be like the little sister to Mobile World Congress, but increasingly it gets bigger and, and more international that it goes into a thing in itself, I suppose. I read that there were 20,000 people there this year, mm -hmm. um, which wow. is huge, which mm -hmm. is enormous. Yeah. Um, so I'd just like to point out that the entire 4YFN conference is basically organized by a team of 20 people, mm -hmm. which I think is, is absolutely incredible. Of course, they have a couple hundred volunteers who will actually help them bring it to life. Mm -hmm. Uh, but if you think about it, like it's it's really small, really lean, very very startupy teams. Yeah. Um, so I, I think it's an incredible achievement. Yeah, yeah. I would agree with that. Yeah. I would agree with that. It was a, um, a real achievement the way that it was organized. Mm -hmm. I would also just add that I really enjoyed uh, the awards part of it. I think mm -hmm. it's um, a really great way of spotlighting particularly outstanding companies. Uh, and there were some companies, lots of companies that I was aware of, but I also discovered a lot of new companies through that. And uh, as always, it's really great to um, give that talent the recognition that it deserves in the form of the awards on, on the last day. So that was also a really special part of the event mm -hmm. for me. Yeah, for me also the awards, the pitch competition were the m most exciting ones um, of the event. Um, I would also agree that uh, it would make sense to have one main stage maybe where really exciting speakers um, uh, would um, be presenting or be on stage and, and not so much happening at the same time. Um, and um, I also really liked um, the, uh, the, the convention style um, and uh, the, the many tables of the startups, although I sometimes felt a little bit sorry because I was worried that there's not so much going on there. like. Um, I, I thought there were maybe a bit too many startups tables compared to the amount of people walking through there. <laughs> so um, maybe one or two of the startups might think, oh, it wasn't worth uh, for them. Um, hopefully not. I don't know. <laughs> I think but it also depends on the day that you were there. Because yeah. the first day, it, it, it did seem a little bit like a ghost town, I think, mm -hmm. in the mm -hmm. first morning. Mm -hmm. uh, but then... Um, the crowds just started rolling in, so mm -hmm. I think later it was a, a little bit better. There was a fluctuation. <laughs> yeah. And have you guys considered um, to make an, an event um, part of your um, media brand? Is yeah, we ran an event uh, last week um, mm -hmm. at One Co. Up where, where we're based, and it was called Tech Icons. Yeah, I've been there. Um, was you good. was at the you were at the event. How did you find it? Yeah, it was good. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. it was really it was a really exciting event. Essentially, it, it brought together. Um, innovators and investors from across Europe uh, in a morning and an evening event and in the morning we had uh, startup pitches from 15 startups that were selected from a few hundred that applied I believe. Um, it was really exciting, it was a really, um, it was a nicely intimate and small event to counter the chaos and massive scale as we were talking about of, of Mobile World uh, Week. Uh, so yeah we really enjoyed that, um, Barcino and Media Partners on a number of events. It's definitely among our future plans as well, so stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Um, <clears throat> yeah, well, I, I had one final question, I think. Um, um, so, um, do, do you think um, like this, this whole startup ecosystem, um, I, mean, I mean, you've also been around now for a while, um, and um, trends are coming and going, right? Um, nowadays, everybody's talking about cryptocurrencies, the blockchain, AI, um, but um, this, this word startup um, in general, um, um, I think it, it tends to be used less and less because it just broadens up so much. Mm -hmm. Startup nowadays don't just um, mean like a technology software company anymore, but can mean so many things. Um, do you feel like um, the appetite uh, for uh, for startups uh, is, is still growing, um, or um, 
um, or um, also the the, um, the the will and the amount of people who are building uh, startups. Um, do, do you see this growing in Barcelona and um, and, and maybe also across Europe, or um, do you think we're currently more in a down curve of um, uh, of of the startup trend, so to speak? I mean, I think, um, you know, if you ask uh, young people who are in university right now, or maybe even younger people, like, like um, high school students, uh, probably more than half of them will say that one day they want to start their own business. Mm -hmm. So I think becoming an entrepreneur is uh, the dream of, of, of young people nowadays, and I think it's, it's increasingly so. Mm -hmm. um, so I definitely don't see... Um, um, like a, a decrease in, in, in startups in, in the near future. Uh, but I also agree with you that the word itself, startup, is, bec is becoming well overly used and just uh, doesn't mean anything mm -hmm. anymore. Mm -hmm. I've, I've, I've actually written an article about uh, when does a startup stop being a startup? Mm -hmm. Like when, 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 uh, when can you finally stop calling a company uh, mm -hmm. a startup? So yeah, of course there are uh, lots of different definitions and uh, the word startup itself is, is, is being used for a lot of things that it's not um, absolutely relevant for. Mm -hmm. But I think the, like the entrepreneurial spirit is probably stronger than ever. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, I would completely agree. Um, my, from my experience, it seems to be something that's growing exponentially and also has an accumulative effect in that yeah, young people see other people starting companies on their own with their laptops from their basement, you know, and uh, it shows other people that they can do it. I'd also say that um, these startups meet a need and the needs of our world are constantly changing. We're yeah. in, you know, the level of development technologically that we're experiencing at the moment is changing our lives rapidly year on year. And that creates new opportunities for startups to help us to live those lives you know um, what I was really struck by at four years from now was the number of uh, businesses with uh, a social element to them mm -hmm. um, just look at the winner of the of one of the awards the hack to gap award um, a really amazing really outstanding uh, startup called we saw which uh, are a work platform promoting flexible working now they initially were founded by two working mothers uh, looking to improve gender equality in the workplace and better representation. Now that's a model that has a social element but also works in terms of transforming the way we work in general because more flexible work timetables work for working moms but they work for everyone and they reflect the way that our society is, the direction our society is moving in. Um, so I think actually as the world continues to change there'll continue to be gaps where we need technology to help us mm -hmm. and issues that need to be resolved by innovative people coming up with interesting solutions and as long as that happens there's a space for startups and for innovators. Wow, that's pretty much a, a good um, sentence to end this discussion <laughs> almost I would say. <laughs> or yeah. do you guys have anything else to add, anything we should talk about now that we're together here? or? Um, I mean, just one thing, maybe a word about the EU Startup Summit, yeah. mm -hmm. like um, how do you see it happening in Barcelona, well, why Barcelona in the first place? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, um, so the last f three years it um, happened in Berlin and um, Berlin is exciting, um, it is uh, nice. Um, it's, it has shitty weather, to be honest, <laughs> <laughs> and um, I always loved Barcelona, I've been here several times, and um, it has a very uh, active um, startup and tech eco ecosystem, and also German people love Barcelona, people all across Europe, all across the world love Barcelona, so I always thought that um, hosting an event in a city like this um, would be uh, equally easy let's say compared to hosting it in Berlin and um, so I thought I'd just give it a try because I w wanted also maybe not, not so much intentional but maybe unintentional to prove that um, eustartups.com and the eustartups summit, summit is really a truly European project mm -hmm. and I didn't want it to become like this Berlin event happening each year um, so have I you think found that it's been very different to the experience of, of your Berlin events? Are there any key differences that you've noticed? No, so far not so much because I think um, 
we're, we're profiting from this wide reach of eustartups.com um, and um, so even here in Barcelona we will um, have I think like 72% um, of all attendees coming from outside of Spain so it will be a really European, really uh, international event um, many um, uh, attendees from um, France, UK, Belgium, Germany, Italy, uh, Portugal, and um, and I think this is also what um, differentiates us from um, many um, other startup events. Um, and I think it's the perfect event uh, also for for startups um, that are considering to an internationalization of their company. So startups uh, who are thinking about um, uh, expanding to the UK. Um, maybe finding partners in France or something. I think attending the EU Startup Summit will be a good starting point for them to get mm -hmm. in contact uh, with the right people. And um, yeah, so um, you should definitely all come. <laughs> <laughs> we still have a few tickets uh, left um, to sell. In, in total, we will have uh, 750 people, um, some exciting speakers like the founder um, of um, King.com, uh, the company behind Candy Crush, um, then the founder and CEO of Clue, which is uh, the world's fastest growing um, female health application. Um, and we will have a big pitch competition uh, with 15 pre-selected startups, uh, which we're currently selecting from over 500 uh, applications from all across Europe. And uh, in the end, we will also have a nice uh, party with um, uh, some networking and um, people getting drunk and, uh, <laughs> so you should definitely all come looking forward to it perfect yeah, yeah. and um, four years from now from four years from now we want to be <laughs> bigger than four years from now <laughs> <laughs> you start let's that's see. a great slogan <laughs> yeah, <it's true. laughs> it's let's, let's see if we can manage it <laughs> and hopefully in Barcelona Okay, so thank you very much for coming today. Thank you so much. It was great to talk thank to you. you. It was really interesting. Perfect. Let's catch up soon. Bye.